Today, we're going to be installing High Speed IDO's N64 HDMI Out Kit. This will enable your N64 to display HDMI to a modern display. It will also allow you to use the different color palettes and aspect ratios. To begin, we'll need to disassemble the N64. There's a total of 6 game bit screws that need to be removed from the bottom of the console. Make sure you go ahead and set them aside and don't lose them. Once you have all the screws out, the top of the console should lift away. This reveals our heatsink as well as the 17 screws that we'll need to remove to release it. We simply cracked all the screws loose but left them in the heatsink so that they wouldn't get lost. We then got rid of all 7 screws located near the bottom that hold the memory expansion slot in. Once we had those 7 removed we could lift the entire memory expansion slot away and that was followed by the heatsink. With the heatsink removed there's a total of 7 more screws that are holding down the top metal casing. We'll go ahead and remove those 7 screws and remove the top metal casing. With the motherboard exposed, we can go ahead and begin to solder the roaming cable. You'll want to solder it to the right side of the chip that's in the center of the motherboard. You'll want to start on the 6th pin. If you notice, there's a white dot every 5 pins, meaning you'll want to start right after the first dot. With this ribbon cable, there's holes at the end of the ribbon cable allowing you to flow solder through to the pads. This means that you don't have to solder directly to the pins of the main chip. Instead, just lay the ribbon cable right along the edge of the pins and solder the pads located right below the ribbon cable. You'll want to use plenty of flux and be delicate and quick with your soldering. You don't want to damage the ribbon cable. Remember, keep your iron around 350 degrees C and move very quickly. If you get any bridging, then you'll want to go ahead and put more flux onto the solder, clean your iron, and then run your iron over the bridged area. This should make the solder jump to your iron and unbridge the pins. If that doesn't work and you have too much solder on the pins, then you may need to use copper braid to remove some. Once again, just move quickly and don't damage the roving cable. Once you're done soldering, you may want to go ahead and use a multimeter just to verify all of your connections to the pins. You'll also want to verify that there's no shorts. With the main pins on the chip soldered, we'll want to go ahead and take the one flying bit of the ribbon cable and solder it to the point labeled 5 volts. Finally, there's one more bit of the ribbon cable that needs to be soldered to another chip. It'll be soldered to the chip located right below the ribbon cable, and you'll want to solder it to the pin that's the second one from the bottom on the right. Once that's done, that marks the end of the soldering for this install. All we need to do now is go ahead and make sure that our PCB will fit in the shell. We'll go ahead and take our PCB with the HDMI on it and lay it in the shell. You may need to trim the three posts that the PCB sits around, depending what version of console shell you have. You may need to remove the plastic using an X-Acto knife or any other method. Just be delicate and make sure you get a good looking cut. From here, the last step is to plug the ribbon cable into the PCB. You want the black side of the ribbon cable to be facing up. From this point, we recommend testing your console. We wouldn't recommend fully reassembling, but for the purposes of the video we have. Go ahead and plug your HDMI in, plug in your game and a controller, and flick on the power on the console. From there, you should see the console turn on, and the image shows up on the screen. This HDMI kit does have a hidden on-screen display that you can use to edit the settings. By holding Start AB, you should see the on-screen display show up. 
Using your C buttons, you can go ahead and scroll the menu, up, down, left, and right. Left and right will change the setting, and up and down will change what you're editing. This works just like all the Game Boy Advance kits and gives you different color modes as well as some different aspect ratios. And that's all there really is to it to this N64 HDMI mod from High Speed IDO. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord link down below. For more content like this, check out our wiki. And as always, thank you for watching.